Well, my past year was probably like everybody else, just chaotic at first, um, trying to figure out what we're going to do, how we're going to do things. Are we going to even survive? Um, a lot of unknowns. So uh, we had to get information like everyone else and figure out how we were going to adjust. So at the beginning, very unclear, scary, but towards the end, very celebratory. Um, we're happy. Um, we're understanding more about what we're going through and being able to adjust and give that to, to our clients. So that's the crazy part. We, be, we began the year with about 50 employees. Now we have close to 100. So in March is basically when it really hit us that uh, we were going to have to adjust or we were going to really decline in business. Um, we service all kinds of locations, banks, daycares, uh, schools. In the daycares, schools, and churches that we service, they're all shutting down. Um, however, uh, the banks that we service picked up in service, and we had to figure out how we were going to be able to provide that service to the locations that were picking up, you know, during the COVID spraying. Because basically, our service is to provide the uh, cleaning and disinfecting and um, sanitizing, and we were able to adjust our model a little bit so that we can provide disinfecting and fogging to a lot of clients, including those clients who are ready to open back up that we've lost and they came back because um, they opened back up. Um, when that happened, we bought new machines. We invested in uh, disinfecting machines. Uh, they call electrostatic spares. Uh, we invested in those. We invested in the PPE, personal protective equipment, a lot of them goggles, face shields, uh, the tie-back suits, um, got hundreds of them in. And then we trained our cleaners on how to disinfect and how to use electrostatic sprayer. And then we advertised to our clients, we provide the service, and the clients picked up on it and they increased their service. And that how, that's how we increased our employment. So we thought we were gonna lose several employees, but we wound up picking up a whole lot more because we adjusted our service that we provide. Basically, we picked up, um, we, we did pick up more business that was outside of that industry. Besides, you know, the bank, we picked up uh, like doctor's offices, um, dental offices, a lot of medical facilities that we were able to provide the uh, electrostatic spraying. But what happened was even more remarkable, the current cl clients that we had, they expanded their services. And then we also were able to pick up more banks. So we went from maybe 20 to 20, 25 banks to almost 100 banks over the course of the year. Um, we went from serving just at nighttime to serving day and night. We went from serving from two days a week to six days a week. So not only did we pick up new clients, but we also expanded on our current clients. So we all had issues getting stuff in. Every um, cleaning company owner can discuss the same thing over and over again. It's taking forever to get something in. We took, I mean, it took almost uh, three months to get electrostatic spray in. You know, we had to figure out how to disinfect without one of those for about two months. And we did, we found, we, we bought sprayers that were compatible with uh, disinfecting locations. So we, we went to our regular uh, resource to get supplies. Um, when they tell, told us that they were gonna be delayed or things would be backed up for two or three months, we started searching Google Plus. We paid a little extra to get some gloves in, to get masks in, um, boxes and boxes of masks, because we knew that if we did not have the equipment, then we couldn't do the job. And if we didn't do the job, we were not gonna be able to hire people um, or, you know, or grow as a company. So we were very tenacious, very, very tenacious on getting supplies that we needed. I had my uh, CFO and my, and my admin officer constantly call suppliers and say, hey, where are the gloves? <laughs> where, where are the face masks? Where is the cleaning? Where's the soap? Soap was a big issue. We had to get soap in. Um, where's the tie-back suits? We need that stuff now. 
you know, and so we constantly p just put pressure on suppliers to get stuff in. And sometimes we had to pay a little extra to get stuff in. I know I think the stuff is a lot cheaper now, but initially back in March and April when demand was so, so high, um, we had to come get very creative and get in supplies and also pay a little extra. So when I first started almost 10 years ago, um, I had first decided to start to, to, to either do my own business um, or work for another company. Um, whether if I go into my own business, was it going to be a franchise? Or was it going to be something I did on my own? Um, so I decided to do a franchise. I paid the franchise free. I did a lot of research first before I selected one. And this franchise office provided the best, the best solution for me. I love the core values. They put God first. Um, everything that was done was done in order. Any decisions that had to be um, made that were maybe a dispute, we settled. Um, we did every, they, they did everything in order and then they taught you the process. I worked for them for about a year first and I understood um, the background and the principles and the core values and I appreciated it and, it, and I adapted easily to those core values. However, it wasn't always easy. Um, I think I was, I, was, I was talking to you earlier. The first year, um, I had to make a decision whether I was going to be able to stay in a place or get an office to even keep my business running, whether I was going to make payroll or whether I was going to um, have to uh, pay another bill, pay for a car, um, a car note. And so the first year, year and a half to three years, for a year and a half to about three years, I lost apartment, I lost a car. Um, I lived in a van for about six months and then I lived from pillow to post basically for about another year and a half to two years before I was able to establish myself as a, a viable business. My first year in business, I thought I was gonna make about $20,000. I made $189 <laughs> my first year in business. Um, so if anybody tell you that starting a business is gonna be easy, especially in the cleaning industry where you're really trying to make a name for yourself, uh, sometimes it could be a little slower than you want it to be. However, if you keep grinding, and which I did, I just kept grinding. There was mornings where I would get up in the morning in my van, put on a suit and tie, go knock on the door, sell that client, then go back to my van, put on my, uh, my office pride gear, my shirt, my green shirt, and go and buff the floors or clean the account that night. Um, sometimes I finish three, two or three o'clock in the morning, get back in my van, go to sleep, go to a truck stop, take a shower, if I had $12 at the time, um, take a shower and get back into my suit again and go back out and do the same thing. Um, and I did that for a good six months to a year almost, just, just grinding it out and trying to make deals. Um, survival, that's the first thing I think about, not quitting. Um, also the support system around me. I think that if Office Pride didn't provide the support system that I needed, even though I was struggling on my own, because some of the decisions I made to live in, uh, in a van or do it without was my decision because I really wanted the business to grow. But when I communicated some concerns to the, to the franchise itself, they were there to support me. Um, they provide the help that I needed just to make it through on the business side. So I chose this particular area because I had two kids going to school at Randolph-Macon. They were in college at the same time. So in, yeah, in 2011 is when I started the business. I had two kids going to school at Randolph-Macon and I had another kid at Cornell University. Um, also during, all this, during this beginning phase, I was going through a divorce as well. And so um, I decided to move up here uh, to be closer to my kids, who were my first employees, by the way. <laughs> so once I got to a place where I started hiring people, they were my first employees. Um, so they're my, the main reason why I came up here, because they were up here. I'm from D.C. originally. I lived in the Norfolk area at the time I was ready to start this business. And I decided to uh, start a franchise in the Richmond area because of my kids. I just 
feel as though um, we all go through a lot of hard times. And if you look at someone else's story or someone else's challenges, you realize that you're not really alone in your own struggles. And if you just push through, you can get through it. And even through this time of COVID, we can get through it.